Welcome guys to this video. Here we are going to discuss about DNB past year paper about paraquat poisoning. So it was asked in this formative assessment test. So what is paraquat actually? It is nothing but a herbicide, herbicide mainly used in agriculture. So mechanism of injury or mechanism of poisoning is most cases homicidal and some cases to be accidental ingestion of the poison now if i say about the agriculture poisoning most common cause worldwide is op poisoning but remember nevertheless there are some poison which causes very high mortality for example aluminum phosphate which is almost near 200 percent mortality rate and this paraquat this paraquat has mortality ranging around nothing less than 50 percent in all case mortality now why there is so much high mortality reports in from paraquat poisoning reason being it can be identified that either due to its inherent toxicological effect or due to absence of proper or lack of proper therapeutic intervention lack of proper therapeutic intervention for the management of paraquat poisoning now what are its toxicological effect and what is the main organ it damages to to understand it remember this paraquat if we check urine urine level it is almost excreted unchanged in the urine therefore it is not something getting readily metabolized or excreted after metabolization in the uh, body getting excreted in urine it is exerting direct effect in the body okay so it doesn't require metabolization to show its effect it is showing its direct effect in the form of direct effect when a person ingest it can cause burn or burn injury to the tongue gi tract edema it affects in the lung level of the causing pneumonitis which later on progress to AIDS and fibrosis. At the level of kidney, it can cause AKI, it can cause severe hepatic dysfunction, which can present as coagulopathy too. Now, now how do this paraquat exert solid effect it is through formation of something called as reactive oxygen species and this exerts the cellular damage remember nuclear factor kappa b also helps in this cellular damage so, all right okay now if you check here in this video the HRCT imaging of a lung effect of paraquat poisoning, you can see there is diffuse, diffuse, uh, diffuse ground glass opacity in both the lung field as well as patchy areas of consolidation. In both this lung field, mainly in the ma mainly in the basal and inferior segments, right? All of this our initial feature of pneumonitis which occurs during first one to four days of ingestion of paraquat then later within a week it leads to progress to ARDS and within three to four weeks it progresses to lung fibrosis remember guys lung fibrosis is the most common cause of death lung fibrosis is the most common cause of death in case of A case of paraquat poisoning right now now at the stage of ARDS or early pneumonitis it is the stage where mechanical ventilation will have a new positive sort of role don't don't over oxygenate at early stage because main pathogenesis was reactive oxygen species so oxygen through its free radical has a scavenging action and might progress the disease give a progressive action to the disease course to lead in the formation of AIDS. Therefore, about oxygenation during early phase of the disease should be prevented. Okay. So, let us come to this one question. 
So bad site urine test for pesticide positive as shown in the below photo what pesticide is detected. Okay, this is nothing but a urine test and urine test is color is turning blue. This is the test used known as urinary. Diethonite test. It is a simple test to assess assess the level of or to say identify the prognosis of a paraquat poisoning. So, how does this test help actually? So, for example, if urinary sodium diethonate test, which is a compound from nothing but a metab after metabolism product of paraquat, if it is negative, we can say clearly that patient patient has not ingested paraquat of adequate amount therefore this is a case of minimal poisoning and if urine test is positive we need to check for the plasma sodium levels case plasma sodium diethonate level if it is negative means all of the thing that the patient has ingested is already being excreted in the urine so we are in the safe region so therefore it has got a good amount of survival benefit but if urine is also positive and plasma is also positive it is a very serious condition guys that there are enough amount of things available poison available in the blood and enough amount in the urine as well so body will take lot of time to metabolize that lot of time to excrete it out of the body and it is the dangerous situation and it is a case of severe poisoning so zero percent survival in patient if with severe poisoning comes after four hour of ingestion therefore this test can be used as a prognostic marker right so what is the step first step is check for urine diethonate level if it is positive check for serum diethonate level if there can be two options in it either positive or negative if positive it means fulminant disease or very severe disease and high mortality if that is negative that means it is moderate to severe disease and mortality is around 50 to 60 percent and if this is negative then it is obviously mild disease mild disease and mortality is very good very less actually so survival chance is very high in such case of urinary diethonate level testing so it has got a good prognostic significance all right now talking about the prognostic significance beside this beside this blood or urine investigation we can also adjourn clinically what is the significance and based on the history of how much amount the person has taken so if the person has taken they have huge amount huge amount to say for example 200 ml a 100 to 200 ml of 20 percent concentration it is enough to cause fulminant course of disease with involvement of multi-organ multi-organ failure which initially usually present with immediate form of vomiting later on stage develops into diarrhea dehydrations renal involvement pancreatitis and ultimately death with death within three to four days if there is mild amount of intake that is moderate amount intake so in such cases in such cases all the organ involvement is not seen mainly two organ is seen one which is the most common cause of death that is the lung that develop into pneumonitis and aids another being the kidney which can develop into acute kidney injury sometimes that may lead to requirement of renal replacement therapy remember as lung is the most common cause of mortality in this mild moderate to severe variety of disease there is also high chance of mortality because lung involvement is seen all right and there is obviously this milder form of disease where urinary diethonate is negative so if you check the disease type it can be mild moderate or fulminant fulminant when more than 200 ml intake is of of 20 percent intake is there and it immediate vomiting followed by diarrhea pain renal failure hepatic impairment g ulceration refractory hypotension or coma and death within one to four days due to multi-organ failure in moderate disease moderate disease there is renal as well as pulmonary involvement 
and there is mortality due to pulmonary environment. Whereas in mild disease, these are usually asymptomatic or mild GI symptom in the form of nausea and vomiting can be there and most of the patient has complete recovery in this case. Okay. So, how do you treat guys? Remember, when a person is taking through mouth, initial effect, initial effect will be ulceration in the esophageal tract or the ulceration in the mouth or, and there is bowel edema. This bowel edema will prevent absorption of nutrients, absorption of food, loss of nutrients like potassium high causing hypokalemia uh, from the gut. This ulceration can later on even progress to stricture formation too. So, you can see this, this is the image showing the ulceration in the tongue as you can see here after intake of the paracoet. Remember this is not this is also known as paracoet tongue. But this paracoet tongue has not any prognostic significance because if someone only takes the paracoet in mouth and spits it out, still there is chance of formation of paracoet tongue, but there will be very less mortality in it. Therefore, it has no prognostic significance. All right. Now, what we can do if there is formation of chances of bowel edema, first and foremost thing we can do is a put a NG tube. Putting NG tube as a evidence along with it that it helps in prevention of stricture. Again, due to bowel edema in the early phase of presentation, we can decontaminate with giving activated charcoal. So, putting an NG tube has a got a positive role in it. Uh, putting decontamination with charcoal, activated charcoal has also got a positive role in it, right? So, what are the other thing that is tried and tested for the treatment purpose? Another thing that is already trialed, nothing else, most of the care is supportive is like giving injection dexamethasone or immunosuppression with the help of cyclophosphamide or high dose methylprednisolone has been tried. Use of scavengers of reactive oxygen species like injection and acetylcysteine infusion mainly neck infusion has been tried but the role has limited mainly it is adjoint for the severe disease where we do not have other option and we need to go for supportive care supportive care in the form of if there is renal environment we need to go for renal replacement therapy in the form of hemodialysis if there is requirement of there is type 1 or type 2 respiratory failure development based on the condition we need to ventilate the patient we need to monitor the regular electrolytes Check for ABG, routine examination in the form of CVC and renal function test should be parameters should be monitored. V volume status should be assessed time to time and fluid replacement should be done. Everything has got a positive role. So, if we check the therapeutic options, we have decontamination, obviously, activated charcoal or fuller salt is used and it is indicated within early arrival if the patient arrives within 2 to 4 hours. NG tube, it is indicated as early as possible as swelling becomes difficult later uh, later on period right and indication is there is if there is case of pharyngeal or esophageal bind um, bind present right okay now urinary diatonate test should be done in every patient to know for prognostication similarly plasma paracoet level or plasma diatonate level should be done routine routine investigation avg everything should be done we need to check for the fluid balance ib fluid hemoperfusion or hemodialysis as per the requirement if there, if there is acute renal failure without pneumonitis in such cases. We need to monitor respiratory rate and oxygen saturation but remember we need to avoid oxygen at early stage because it can progress lead to progression of the disease. We need to monitor cardiovascular status, level of consciousness, pain relief and sedation. This is another thing level of treatment that needs to be always addressed in such patient because of the binding, binding in the esophagus or pharynx or the oral cavity there will be severe pain so pain relief should be addressed in such patient right and obviously intubation and ventilation experimental therapy in the form of steroids that is dexamethasone or salicylates or neck infusion there is no evidence from human clinical trial but animal model has shown a success, successful result okay that's all about paracoid poison